This is uh, Geometry Chapter 3-2. We're going to talk about the properties of parallel lines. So we're going to, uh, we have one postulate and three theorems to work with. The same side interior angles postulate, and then the alternate interior angle theorem and the corresponding angles theorem and alternate interior angles theorem. So first thing, same side interior angles postulate. If we're given a uh, line AB and CD, and we're given that they're parallel, so there's the parallel symbol, and I wrote the notation, these arrows, indicating that this line is parallel to that line, and a transversal, EF. Then the postulate states that the same side interior angles are supplementary. So th the angle 3 plus angle 5 is going to be 180 degrees, and likewise um, angle 4 and angle 6 are going to be same side interior angles, and they're going to add up to 180 degrees, okay? And we're given the alternate interior angles theorem, which I like to remind everyone that it looks like the letter Z, that these are the alternate interior angles here, the inside of the Z with those two parallel lines. So that would mean that 3 is congruent to 6, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 5. Okay. And the corresponding angles theorem, once again, assuming that line AB is parallel to CD, we got the transversal EF. And the corresponding angles are going to be congruent. So angle 2 will be congruent to angle 6. Angle 4 will be congruent to angle 8. And then on the other side of the transversal, we can notice the vertical angles. And then what do you know? That matches up that 1 and 5 are congruent. Those are corresponding angles. And look at here vertical angles of 2 and 3 and 6 and 7. And look, now 3 and 7 are corresponding angles. Corresponding angles uh, from the previous lesson are going to be on the same side of the, tra of the transversal and if we're looking at angle 3 that's below that parallel line AB, then we're looking at 7 that's below the line CD. Okay. And simply put, we're just saying that corresponding angles are congruent. Okay. And alternate exterior angles. Well, the easiest way to look at this is to recognize the letter Z. There's our letter Z. And you have your alternate interior angles. And once you identify them, then just look outside of them, following the vertical angle here. Angle 2 is going to be congruent to angle 7. And likewise, angle 1 will be congruent to angle 8. Okay. Now, let's look at a proof for, for this. Um, this is uh, for the alternate interior, interior angles theorem. Because when you see the word theorem, that means we can prove it. Postulate means that it's just a rule that we have to accept, and a theorem is something that's proven on previous information. So we're given the information that line AB is parallel to CD. We've got the transversal EF, and we're supposed to prove that the alternate interior angles are congruent. So we know by the same side interior angles uh, postulate that they're supplementary. So 3 and 5 are supplementary, 4 and 6 are supplementary. So I wrote that, that they're, they sum to 180 degrees. Now we also know that 5 and 6 and 3 and 4 are a linear pair, so I wrote that as well. Now since these combinations of angles, 3 and 5, 4 and 6, 5 and 6, and 3 and 4, are all equal to 180, we can set those combinations equal to each other because they have equal measure. So when I took these two and set them equal to those two, see, look, we well, can subtract out the, five, the, angle, the measures of angle fives and leave us three and the measure of three and the measure of angle six behind. Hey, hey, we're in the direction of what we're trying to prove. And the same thing with this other set. Look, if you, you can see that um, this set here, that you have angle threes, uh, measures of angle three on each side. So you subtract that out and you're going to have measure of angle 4 and 5. Once again, this is what we're aiming for, to try to prove congruency. So I wrote that by substitution property, substituting them in for each other since they're all equal to 180. And then I'm writing the reflexive property to show that we're about to subtract out 
the measure of angle 5 here and the measure of angle 3. And I did the subtraction, which leaves us with pretty much what we're trying to prove, that the measure of angle 3 is equal to the measure of angle 6 and the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle 5. And once you say that angles are of equal measure, then we can do the final line of the proof. Let me try to move this down if I can. I don't think I can, so okay, I'll just move this out of the way. And I'll move these up. See, now we can say that because they're of equal measure, that they are congruent. Okay. Now, this is the same proof. It's just that um, we, we can take a shortcut. We have a previous theorem that we learned a long time ago that congruent um, that if you have two angles or supplements of congruent angles or the same at uh, same two angles um, excuse me if you have two angles or supplements of congruent angles or they're supplements to the same angle we can say that then those two original angles are congruent to each other well that's what's taking place up in here so immediately you can use that theorem to quickly come to the end of this proof which is a lot easier Okay, now that we've gotten past the proof stuff, let's let's apply what we've learned. So these are alternate exterior angles. We've got the two parallel lines. We've got the transversal, which means you can set those two expressions equal to each other and do the math. So there you go. So here we I did the original setup. Looks like uh, I added 8 to each side. Looks like I subtracted the 9x from each side. Divide by 2, we get x is equal to 8. If you want to find the measure of these angles, then you substitute 8 in for one of those expressions. So I did that. Whoops. So there we go. So now you know that this is 80 degrees. So that's 80 degrees, which means that this missing angle here is 100. That's 100. This is 80. And that's as far as we can go. No, nope. we got an 80 here as well. OK. Let's see. Once again, alternate exteriors, so you can set them equal to each other. Do the math. So we had x is equal to 5. If you substitute the 5 in there, then to one of these expressions, you can find out that this angle is 85. Well, if that's 85, then this has to be 95. This is 85. Nice handwriting. This is 95. And this is 95, and this is 85, 85, and 95. OK. There's corresponding angles. So you can you get parallel lines. You can say that these corresponding angles are congruent. Whoops. So you can set those two expressions equal to each other and do the algebra. And you find out that x is 3, substitute that back into either of these expressions to find the missing angle. So I did that. So you get the 70 degrees. So to fill in on this picture, that would be 70. This is 70. This is 70. That's 70. That would make this 110. Can't figure that out. This is 110. That's 110. And that's 110. OK. These are same side interiors. Parallel lines, transversal, these same side interiors, that means they're supplementary. So you add them together and set them equal to 180. And then do the algebra. You find out that x is 5. Substitute that into either of these expressions. I'm going for the 24x. So you can quickly find out that that's 120 degrees. So if this is 120 degrees, well, then that's 120. That I would assume then that then this would have to then be 60 because it's a linear pair. 60, 60, and there's your 120. We're good? I think we're good. Let's see. I think we're done. Yes, we are. So thank you for watching this.